This video was brought to you by Indently.io, learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be talking about ordered dictionaries, which we can import from collections. Now, as of Python 3.7, the dictionary we use every day is ordered by default. It is guaranteed to maintain the order of its items. So this video is going to be more about the subtleties of ordered dictionary and how that's different from the dictionary we use every day. But to get started, let's take a look at how we can create our very first ordered dictionary. And for this example, I'm going to call it OD for ordered dictionary. And that's going to be of type ordered dictionary, which we can annotate the same way we would annotate a regular dictionary. So the key is going to be of type string and the value is going to be of type integer in this case. And that's going to equal an ordered dictionary with the following dictionary inside. The key will be A, the value will be one, and the key will be B, with another value of two. And that's how we create an ordered dictionary. Now, when we print this, what we're going to get back is the wrong output because it comes from a different script. But if we actually run the correct script, what we should get back is an ordered dictionary, just as we see over here. And it works exactly the same way as a regular dictionary, which means that if we were to type in od.get and we try to get the value or the key of A, what we should get back is the value of one. Now, an alternative way to create an ordered dictionary is to use the from keys method or the from keys constructor. And this takes some keys such as A and B. And optionally, you can also provide a default value, which I'm going to set to zero. So now when we run this, what we should get back is an ordered dictionary that looks like this. Each key is going to contain the value of zero because that's what we decided to give it. But let's go back to what we had earlier because now I want to cover the special methods that we can use with ordered dictionaries. The first one being pop item. And I know we have this with regular dictionaries as well, but I'm going to show you also an extra argument that we can provide to it, which we can't with dictionaries. But right now, if we were to print this, you'll notice that it's going to pop the last item, which is B. But as I mentioned, we also have a special argument which we can provide and this is called last and if we set this to false it practically just does the opposite which means we're going to pop a instead of b because this is the first item in the dictionary and just like with a regular dictionary we can also retrieve the item that we're popping just by creating a variable or by using it directly here we can type in something such as popped and this is going to be a tuple of type string to integer and when we actually print that what we're going to get back is a and one if you want, you can just steal the type annotation in PyCharm by doing this, and that will work perfectly fine. But there's also another special method that I want to show you. For this example, I'm going to add another key value pair, which will be C and three. And then I'm going to type in od.move to end. And I'm sure you already guessed what this does. So let's just move A to the end and then print our dictionary. And what you should notice is that A was moved to the end of the dictionary. Otherwise, just like with popped, we can provide the last argument and set that to false. And what it does is treat the beginning as the end, which means if we want to move C to the end, it's actually going to move that to the front. So now we have C, A, and B. If we try to move A to the end with last being set to false, nothing's going to happen because it's already at the end. False just makes the beginning the end. Now, there are a few things you need to note when using the ordered dictionary. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to create two ordered dictionaries, one that's called OD1, another one that's called OD2. And I'm going to remove the C keys and then just swap up B and A. And B is going to contain the same value, two, and A is going to contain the value of one. But the first thing I want to show you is that if you were to create an equality check here by typing OD1 is equal to OD2, what you're going to get back is false because these are not in the correct order. They might contain all the same key and value pairs, but they're just not in the right order. And something interesting about this is that if we were to create a regular dictionary of type string to integer, and we were to take this over here and assign it to our dictionary and then use that in our comparison check, this will return true because order only matters when it's comparing it to another ordered dictionary. If you compare an ordered dictionary to any other mappable object, it's not going to care about the order. So that's something quite important to understand when you are working with ordered dictionaries. The order actually matters when you're comparing them to other ordered dictionaries. Also, the ordered dictionary was designed to be good at reordering operations. 
space efficiency, iteration speed, and the performance of update operations were secondary. Also, in the documentation, you'll find some really cool Python recipes that use this audit dictionary. And I'm going to be showing you one of those, which I took directly from the documentation. But let's go ahead and create a class called Luo Dict, which stands for Last Updated Audit Dictionary. And that's going to inherit from Audit Dictionary. And the whole purpose of this class is to store items in the order that the keys were added. And it will only take one method called set item, if I can spell that. Set item. There we go. The key is going to be of type string, and the value is going to be of type integer. And it's going to return none. Then we can call super set item with the key and the value. And finally, we can call self dot move to end and pass in the key. And just like that, we created our very own custom dictionary implementation. But of course, let me show you how it works. So here we're going to create something called Luo Dictionary, which will be of type Luo Dictionary. And that's going to equal a Luo Dictionary with the following key value pairs, A1 and B2 and C3. Now, if we were to refer to this dictionary and update the value of A, for example, say we want to give it the value of 111, and we were to print this dictionary, what you should notice is that it was appended to the end. So that was the last value updated. And we can do the same thing with C. We can type in Luo dictionary at the index of C and change that to 222. Then if we were to print this dictionary once again, you'll notice that C is now at the end because that was the last value updated. And that's quite cool, especially if the order of your dictionary is important. But to sum it up, in most cases, you will probably be fine using a regular dictionary because it already maintains order and is more efficient than the ordered dictionary. And all the methods I showed you are possible just by writing a few extra lines of code. But as always, using built-in functionality should become a second nature because in general, it's going to be more optimized and it's going to handle many more cases than your code probably ever will, unless you really enjoy debugging and handling a lot of random cases. But there's also one final benefit in using ordered dictionary, and that comes in the name itself it explicitly tells whoever is reading it that this is a dictionary where the order actually matters. Of course, you can add your own naming convention to your own dictionaries, or you can add some comments, whatever you want, but this actually shows the developer or whoever is reading it that you meant for the order to actually matter. Anyway, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know if you found any part of this video to be quite interesting or whether you have any more questions regarding the ordered dictionary. But otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.